Hey everyone, let's talk about your families. Some families like to play board games. I know my family, we love to play Scrabble. What about outdoor games? What game would you play with this? Well, you could play baseball with it. You could play tag with it. You could play golf with it. But it's really designed to be used when you play tennis. And I want to teach you two tennis words today. The first word is serve. When you serve a tennis ball, you start the play by hitting the ball to the other player. The game would never get started without a server. The second tennis word is love. Can you guess what that means? You may be surprised by this one. In tennis, love means that the score is zero. Today we will hear that serving and loving are both parts of God's plan for families. Family members can love and care for one another. Say that with me. Family members can care and love for one another. Today's Bible verse reminds us to not only think of ourselves, but also to care for others. Read this verse with me. Everyone should look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Philippians 2.4. That's not always easy to do, is it? Brothers and sisters drive us crazy sometimes. Or we may think that our parents are just being unfair. Sometimes we're just in a grumpy mood. God's plan is for us to serve one another and to get along well. Let's pray as we begin our time together today. After we pray, we'll check in with the Mooseberry Kids. God, thank you for our families. Thank you that you have a plan for families and want to teach us how to love and care for one another. Please help us to follow your plan. Teach us to be the daughters, sons, brothers, or sisters that you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so last week, Lannis finally had enough from his twin brother, Tannis, and he went off. But then, after some wise words from Jasper, Lannis realized that he needed to ask his brother to forgive him for the mean things that he said. And it looked like Tannis was finally starting to understand what following God is about. Let's see what happens next. Here we are, back at Mooseberry Academy. I was invited back, even though I'm not technically exceptional or very, very, very gifted. Although I'm not alone in this. Kablamo! My most death-defying act so far? Survive a school for geniusness. Oh yeah, one more major change. Greetings all! So this is my new educational institution. Quite. So my twin brother Tannis got kicked out of Gooseberry Academy. Because he was cheating. Now he's here and he keeps talking about how our school isn't as good as Gooseberry. Gooseberry's water fountains have sparkling water. I learned this theoretical quantum thermodynamic interdimensional wormhole time travel theory like two years ago. Hardwood floors? Really? What's the matter? Couldn't afford marble? I'm used to my brother. I grew up with him. But for the kids here, well, he's a bit much. Two years ago, theoretical quantum thermodynamic interdimensional wormhole time travel theory was still in its infant stages. How dare he acts like he knows more about it than anybody here. I'm sorry. There's only room for one evil genius at this school. I'm new here myself, but he does seem pretty destructive. And I know destructive. Once I somersaulted across a collapsing bridge. Kablamo! <laughs> like I care what these Mooseberry peasants think. I have real friends over at Gooseberry Academy. I'll be back where I belong someday. And on that day, every Mooseberry student will be sorry they ever crossed me. In the meantime, I have myself to keep me company. I don't need anyone else. I'm fine with no friends here. I'm not crying. By the way, this is my new love. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard having a brother. This is an important message for all Mooseberry students. I know my brother acts like he doesn't need anyone, but that's not true. He's the new kid at a new school. He's got a lot of negative history with us. And if any of us were in this position, 
We'd probably be scared. And act annoying too. I just ask that you give them a chance. Thanks. Not that I agree with what you said or anything, but why did you do that for me? Because we're family. And the Bible shows us that family members can love and care for one another, even when one of them acts like they don't want or need that love. I know you're skeptical of God's ways, but I'm not. But this is how God tells us to treat our family. Well, I'm not saying that I need you to speak up for me, but I suppose it wouldn't be bad to have one ally in my new school. You're welcome. I never said thank you. Don't put words in my mouth. You're welcome. Stop that. 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 Look at this big jar of M&Ms. Do you think you could guess how many candies are in the jar? I'll bet some of you could get very close, but now, just to end all the suspense, there are 1,012 M&Ms in this jar. I know because I took the time to count them. Whew. Did you know that the Bible says God loves and cares for you so much that he knows the number of hairs on your head? You know, I love my family a lot, but even I don't know how many hairs are on each of their heads. It's probably pretty easy for them to count the hairs on my head, though. Anyway, God wants us to love others because he loves us. Sometimes that isn't as easy as it might seem. Today's Bible story is about 12 brothers. Do you think it would be easy to live with 12 brothers? I have two brothers, and I know it was not easy growing up. So, you know it, isn't, it wasn't always easy for Joseph. Today, we're still in the book of Genesis, this time in chapter 42. Jacob had 12 sons, but he loved his son Joseph the most. When Joseph's brothers saw how much Jacob loved Joseph, they hated him. One day, Joseph's brothers were watching their father's flocks when they saw Joseph coming in the distance. They immediately began to plot against him. Let's throw Joseph in a pit, said the oldest brother, Reuben. When Joseph arrived, they stripped off his colorful robe, the one his father had given him, and threw him into a pit. Later, a trader caravan came by, and the brothers sold Joseph to the traders for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took Joseph to Egypt. The brothers smeared some blood on Joseph's robe and sent it to their father, Jacob. He recognized it and thought that a wild animal had killed Joseph. Many years passed, and Joseph was put in prison because someone told a lie about him. Later, God helped Joseph explain Pharaoh's dreams and Pharaoh made Joseph a ruler in Egypt. Joseph stored grain so the people of Egypt could survive a famine. We're going to pick up our story in Genesis chapter 42, verses 1 through 3. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you keep looking at each other? Listen, he said, I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we will live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. Jacob did not allow his youngest son, Benjamin, to go to Egypt with his brothers. Jacob was afraid something might happen to him, so 10 of Jacob's sons traveled to Egypt. When they came to the man in charge, they bowed down before him. The brothers did not realize that the man was Joseph, their brother. Even though Joseph recognized them, he did not reveal who he was just yet. Instead, he sent them home and ordered them to come back with Benjamin. The next time Jacob's sons returned to Egypt, they brought Benjamin with them. When Joseph saw his youngest brother, he could not stay silent any longer. And we'll pick it up. Genesis chapter 45, verse 3. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But they could not answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Joseph comforted his brothers and told them not to worry. He explained that it was God who sent him to Egypt. 
Joseph explained how he had become a ruler in Egypt and how God had used him to save lives during the famine. Then Joseph threw his arms around Benjamin and they wept together. Joseph promised to take care of his brothers and father Jacob from that day forward. You know, even though his brothers treated him badly, Joseph chose to love and care for his family. Jesus loves and cares for all people. When Jesus was on the earth, he showed love to people with diseases, people who made wrong choices, and people who disagreed with him. Jesus also showed love to his family and his friends. Remember this? There are a lot of candies in this jar, but the candy is no good if it stays in the jar. Candy is meant to be eaten and enjoyed. God's love is meant to be shared with others. This week, make the choice to love and care for people. You can love others because God loves you. Today's Bible verse reminds us to care for others, and we can especially care for our family members. Read Philippians 2, 4 with me. Everyone should look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Jesus said that we should love others more than we love ourselves. Jesus didn't want people to be selfish. Jesus wants people to love others, care for them, and serve them. We follow Jesus' example when we care for others. Families are special, and no two families are exactly alike. No matter what your family looks like, God wants you to love and care for one another. Let's hear from some kids about their families. How do you love and care for your family? We support each other at like our events, like uh, sports events, school events, stuff like that. We will go, we'll go and like support each other and cheer, be, our, be each other's cheerleaders, kind of. We usually like we go out, like we eat together, we all have fun together. Usually when we're home, like we do stuff together and like we just have a good time. I'm kind to them, I compliment them sometimes, I love on them. I make sure to like give them a hug every day, tell them they look pretty. Just spending time with my siblings and with my parents, I think it's really important to me. How can you respond when a family member is not loving and kind toward you? Sometimes it makes me just feel really mad, but God shows us that we need to just keep loving them and we can like talk to them about it, but you don't need to be mean back. It's hard for me because I can be very stubborn, but um, I know that we are always family, we'll always be family, and no matter how mean or um, how much of an argument we can get into, that, that we'll always love each other, and in the end, that we'll always forgive each other no matter what. We'll like disagree and uh, just kind of argue for a while and then, like I said earlier, just kind of dissipates because it's not that important. If they're not being nice to me, I just uh, try to solve it kind of. Like be, okay, then what can I do to be better then? God's plan for families is for them to love, respect, and help one another. That doesn't mean you will never argue with your brothers or sisters or get angry, but it does mean that you should do your part to get along. All families have bad days, but God still expects you to make the right choice, even when you don't feel like it. That means being respectful to your parents when they ask you to do something you don't want to do. It means choosing to be respectful of your brothers and sisters instead of yelling. God wants families to show love and be quick to forgive, just like Jesus loves and forgives. Family members can love and care for one another. Say that with me one more time. Family members can love and care for one another. God gave you your family and he wants your family to work together to honor him. Look for opportunities this week to show love and care toward your family. I'm glad you joined us today. Be sure to tell your family what you heard today. And hey, keep washing your hands and helping your parents. We'll see you soon.